going guys my name is Devin and welcome back to news and hacks and today we got for you the top 10 android first person shooter games of all time until 2016 so sit back relax and enjoy the video and with no time to waste let's get straight into number 10 at number 10, we have Call of Duty Strike Team. Call of Duty Strike Team for Android is a slave to its own name. At its best, it brings fresh ideas to the series, including squad combat and a top-down perspective that's well suited for touch devices. The gameplay hook is that at any time you can switch the point of view, from the first-person view to an overhead drone view. From the sky, you can direct your squad to cover or order them to fire, toss a grenade or secure objective, uh, just like a, a real-time strategy. And then this mode enhances the tactics of positioning and map awareness while negating the need for sharp and precise aim. Because you're almost always controlling multiple soldiers at the same time, so it's often possible to boost over fences or set up your own covering fire or distract enemies for silent takedown or uh, just try out new tactics. Anyway, playing strike team this way is fun, challenging, and brimming with tactical options. At number 9, we have Deus Ex The Fall. Deus Ex The Fall is a story-driven action RPG and the first Deus Ex in the series to be released on a mobile device. The game includes never-seen-before characters from the novel Deus Ex The Icarus Effect and picks up directly where the book finishes. We are back in 2027, a golden era for science, technology, and human augmentation, but also a time for great social divide and global conspiracy. Ben Saxon, a former British SAS mercenary who underwent physical augmentation, is desperate for the truth behind the drug conspiracy, and betrayed by his private military employees, the tyrants, not only is his life at risk, but for all augmented human, time is running out. At number 8, we have Fields of Bell. Fields of Bell is not just for the paintball flag but it's a game that appeals to all gamers that love the first-person shooter genre. It should be noted that this is a title that allows users to start playing for free but includes in-app purchases to give players access to additional content. However, there is sufficient content available for free without the need for making any purchases. Players have several options when customizing their character. Gears may be purchased or collected, such as the paintball guns, magazine, and air canisters. Furthermore, characters may be customized by changing helmet, outfit, skin tone, and overall appearance. Intense gameplay, intuitive controls, and extensive content make this a must-own app. This is not a game for casual players, but instead geared more toward the hardcore shooter fans. Let's get on to the next one. At number 7, we have Unkilled. There is something eminently playable and eminently familiar about Unkilled. It's Badfinger at its free-to-play zombie blasting best, but you can't help but think that this is just another game in the super successful Dead Trigger series. The game is hidden during a zombie outbreak in New York and you are a part of a crack team of gunmen sent out to shoot the zombies until they turn into puffs of glittery gold smoke. The default control scheme is remarkably simple. Drag the thumb around the left of the screen to move and the one around the right of the screen to aim whatever weapon of mid-level destruction you got equipped. Overall this game is beautiful and smooth and a must-play game from Madfinger. So let's get on to the next one. At number 6, we have Modern Combat 4 Zero Hour. With Modern Combat 4, Gameloft continues to push mobile gaming to a new visual height. Gamers will chase villains through Barcelona, get embroiled in major firefights in the street of Seattle, and eventually storm an enemy compound in Antarctica. There's no sense of phasing and a little gameplay variety besides the aforementioned vehicle segments, but all of the extensive veterinary at your disposal feels powerful and satisfying, especially the shotgun which seem to work at absolutely long distances. Like its predecessor, Modern Combat 4 features a suite of free multiplayer modes and maps powered by Gameloft Live. Local Wi-Fi multiplayer is also included. In my limited multiplayer test, the experience was fun and lag-free. Up to 12 players can duke it out across 8 modes and 8 maps. Let's get on to the next one. At number 5, we have Deer Hunter 2016. 
The Yohara 2016 utilizes a energy meter, but it's a generous one compared to most of other freemium games of this variety. The game has a variety of animals to hunt on with a variety of weapons. Levels cost 1 energy bar to attempt and with the default of 10 energy bars and when full, I had no problem always having enough energy during my play sessions with the game over the weekend. The Deer Hunter 2016 also rewards players with additional energy whenever they level up, which occurs often at the beginning. A free energy bar by watching an ad and random refills during pre-designated time windows during the day. And the first full energy refill is free. Alternatively, a $5 starter pack is available that instead of including some gold or cool assault rifle in your pack, increases the maximum energy by 2 that is from 10 to 12 and which I thought is a clever idea to give players a bit extra content every time they play the game. At number 4, we have Dead Trigger 2. A little over 4 years ago, Madfinger Games released the original Dead Trigger, a free-to-play zombie shooter, but it wasn't that perfect, but Dead Trigger made me genuinely excited about Madfinger's future projects, and so here we are with Dead Trigger 2. Dead Trigger 2 uses the same basic mechanics as its predecessor, but has addressed its one real shortfall, a lack of depth. Dead Trigger, for all of its fun, did eventually become very, very, very repetitious. The linear difficulty call also meant that you would reach a point where you have to grind to the next weapon upgrade got so long and become so necessary that it didn't feel so much like the game wanted to take your money as it didn't have any more content to give you. I really enjoyed this game, it has a wide variety of weapons, new updates and levels and a decent storyline. At number 3, we have Dead Effect 2. Throughout the first couple of missions, you will be gradually introduced to the various mechanics of the game and the hood. At first, I found the default portion of the fire and reload buttons to be in the way of my movement, but that could be because of my big hand. You can rearrange the hood however you see fit via the options menu, and the game controls are fine overall. You can even choose where to place the action button for activating elevators, which is nice. Dead Effect is fully voiced, which is both a good and a bad thing. It's good in that it creates more mercy in the environment, which is already a bloody, dark, and foreboding atmosphere, but bad in that the acting is not really good. Both of the player characters sound strained, and the ship AI sounds cheesy, and Wagner, who is helping you throughout the game, sounds like a very bad Schwarzenegger. Let's get on to the next game. At number 2, we have Modern Combat 5 Blackout. Lock and load for the next intense chapter of this blockbuster first person shooter franchise as Modern Combat 5 Blackout brings the action back with new European locations and decimating graphics. Fast-paced story missions with various challenges taking place from Tokyo to Venice and for an added challenge, test your skills at the new Spec Ops missions. Four customizable classes, Assault, Heavy, Recon, or Sniper can be leveled up across single and multiplayer gameplay. Find the playstyle that suits you and activate the class-specific skills by earning and spending skill points. Intuitive, highly customizable controls so you can play just the way you want. This is one of the best FPS games I love and I personally recommend to every Android gamers. Let's get on to the next one. And at number 1 and the best first person shooter Android game, we have Nova 3 Freedom Edition. Near Orbit Vanguard Alliance or Nova 3 is the third installment in the popular first person shooter game by Gameloft. Following the never-ending trials and tribulations of Call Warden, Nova 3 continues the story as Warden is yet again recalled into action, and this time to the ruins of San Francisco to aid an old friend. From there you will travel to several more planets in a derelict ship and even the home planet of Walt Rides. I will save the spoilers for those you of you that care about the story. The graphics are impressive and the storyline is good, it's fully free to play and a must play game. 
And before we end up our list, as an honorable mention, we have Critical Ops. Critical Ops is an upcoming shooter, a decent Counter-Strike clone for your mobile. It features pretty decent graphics, online multiplayer, tons of weapons to pick up, and weapon skins to add a bit of customization. It basically looks exactly like Counter-Strike and the Alpha is just out on Google Play, so go and give it a try. And that's it, so guys, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the video, if you did really enjoy, don't forget to punch that like button in the face, and if I missed anything from my list, any of the, your favorite games or something, just comment it right below, and that really, really helps a lot. Also, don't forget to punch through that subscribe button if you don't want to miss out on our next video, and I have included the download links of all the games in the description. See you all, fabulous people, and until next time, goodbye. I'm Devin. Gen hacks back in stacks. Vega video maker skills like heroes hacks. Three guys best but it's no juice. Giggity, figgity, rig a pick a tick a shiggy. Get in here. What the shot? Woo! <laughs> what are you doing down there? I survived. What the fuck? What the fuck is that? Ah! What's what? <laughs> He's a fucking flying dog! <laughs>